ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Ed Heafy Field here at Mullins Park in Coral Springs, Florida. Sam Gelfand here for the South Florida Winter League. And today we have a special guest joining me on color commentary for this game is Lance Donovan. How are you doing, Lance? I'm pretty good. Excited for some baseball today. Currently up to bat is number three, Luis Tehran for the Puerto Rico Islanders as they take on the South Florida Winter League Collective. The South Florida Winter League Collective, not quite an all-star team of sorts, but just a random assortment of players from throughout the league. Grounded to first, steps on the bag, does now bone, and the umpire calls him out. And Sam, what do you think about that? He slid into first base. Not a good strategy because you actually have greater velocity if you run through the bag rather than sliding. Well, yeah, does Usain Bolt slide through the finish line? I would hope not. Yeah, <laughs> that would hurt a little bit, right? He's wearing shorts, we're not. He's been a power threat throughout this season, although he grounds that one to third, goes home with it. Caught in a rundown. He's safe! Jake Simpson did not have a handle on the ball. Got away from him slightly, wasn't able to apply the tag in time, so Holton is safe on first with an RBI. Now Bone pitches, and that one is hit shallow into left field, rushing for it. It's going to drop in for a hit. Mark Richard Calmer fumbled for it. Another run comes home, and another RBI single, this time for number 24, Dylan Hatch. 2-0, the Islanders are in the lead. Once again, that's exactly what happens when you put the ball in play and make things happen on the base pass. The aggressive base running again helping out this Puerto Rican team, and they scored two runs early in the first inning, but that's just great base running there, no hesitation. And that's your three hitter there. He stole a base and then just scored a run on a little blooper to the outfield. So here's Mark Richard Culmer from Nassau in the Bahamas, actually came to the United States for high school. And you've been around high school sports, I know, so this name might ring a bell. He graduated from IMG Academy. Wow. One of the top sports high schools in the entire country, yep, located in Bradenton, Florida. I only know that because I got family there. Not because you got recruited? No, I wish. <laughs> Comer rips one into center field, going back at the wall. Touch them all! Mark Richard Comer showing off his power. Rips one deep into center field. Wow, you're talking about his speed, but look about the power. He's got the power in the speed combo, and you know scouts certainly love to see that. <laughs> The batter, by the way, is number seven, Ivan oh, Gonzalez. Wow. That just hit a car? There's a door open in that car right there, and it went about two inches in front of the open door. You think of the damage that's caused just cosmetically by hitting the hood or something, but imagine if a ball gets into your interior. I mean, at the minimum, you know, you've got dirt stains that yeah. you'd have to worry about <laughs> on the upholstery. So here comes Carlin Ray. Usually number 18, not wearing a number on his jersey today. Yeah, well, everyone else is wearing a number, so he's trying to be unique, you know, be a little different. <laughs> So number not available is Carlin Ray. It is a beautiful day here, not a cloud in the sky. A little bit warmer than it has been normally, luckily. It's been as low as the high 40s recently here. Unseasonably cold, and hey, I work outside. We want to exhibit as many of these players as we possibly can, so that if that means switching out pitchers every two, three innings, and that's what we're going to do, keep these arms fresh. Colazzo rips one high and deep into left field, back at the wall, touch them all! Home run by number 11, Joseph Colazzo. Got a good handle on that, as they say, the lumber made contact, and you could tell that was gone from the moment it left it. Right next to the scoreboard, takes it yard, and he can go back to the dugout smiling as it is now 3-1, to one. the Islanders remain in the lead. And with that, we welcome back Lance Donovan. Oh my goodness, Sam, I was all the way in the bathroom, which is about, I don't know, a half mile away, and I heard that one from the... How far did that ball go? I would have to imagine at least 350 feet. Rivera back into the box. They're bringing the infield in here. It is a contact hitter here, yeah. and you, you've got runners on second and third. <laughs> oh, and it's right over the infield. That strategy didn't work out too well. One run's going to score, another one being waved around. He can hold up and stand up and cross the plate as Howard as well as Abraham Alejandro. They both score, and now we're all tied up at three apiece. And boy, Sam, I can't tell you how good that feels. They bring the infield in, like you said. You're a leadoff hitter, contact hitter. You're expected to hit the ball on the ground, and you hit a line drive right over the second baseman's head in the outfield, and you get two ribbies for your team. And when you put the ball in play, when you try to steal bases, when you try to take the extra base, it just makes it that much harder uh, on the opposing team. And Rivera tries to take it, but he might not even have had to. Deep to left, bobbles the catch at the wall. So Colmer advances to second and Rivera to third. <laughs> One of the oddest doubles you'll see. And I mean, that ball was hit pretty far. He almost got it. So have yourself a game, why don't you? Mark Richard Colmer, a home run and a double off the wall. I'm trying to prove to you, he's 
got a lot of pop. Oh my that God. went behind Hagenmiller, kicked some rocks right into us, and Rivera's gonna score. So the Collective are now in the lead over the Islanders, 4-3, to three, as there's a bunch of dirt and rocks on our table now. That's not really a brush back, that's a brush forward. <laughs> well, that is hit high into right field, a pop-up. Makes the catch. Comer is gonna come home. And a successful sacrifice fly for Ian Hagenmiller. Not to knock the right fielder, but I mean, just, he kind of just rolled that one in there. Um. Well, perhaps what he's thinking is Comer is a fast runner, yeah. as we know. Not even going to bother make the throw to home because you're just not going to get him. So yeah. conserve some energy. Bring it for conserve next time. Conserve some energy. Well, some people play harder. Some yeah. people play smarter. <laughs> Fun fact about Michael Howard. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. As that one's ripped into right field. Gets under it. Sliding. Makes the catch. Didn't show off the arm. That's only one of the tools. He can certainly field out there. Nice play by the right fielder. Simpson takes off, sliding, throw to third, is not going to get him, goes into outfield. Simpson is coming home. Another run crosses the plate. It is 5-3, to three, I believe the score is. The South Florida Winter League ahead over the Puerto Rico Islanders. Oh I'll get to that in a moment as there's a chopper to second base. Sliding, can't come up with it. Run's going to score as that ball goes into shallow center field. So an E4 gets Rivera on base. And the run scores. Sam, the official scorer here, is being very, very tough today. <laughs> took a <laughs> took a really tough hop. The two middle infielders colliding, but as a former second baseman, oof, I take offense to that. Well, as I said, if it hits off the yeah. glove, it's generally an error. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the top of the fifth here at Ed Heafy Field in Coral Springs, and we have a new pitcher on the mound for the South Florida Winter League Collective. Adam Falcon has his first pitch ripped into left field, deep, back, and gone. Touch them all for number nine, Emmanuel Santos. One pitch, one shot to left. <laughs> That's a way to start off an inning, huh? I, I like the, the leadoff hitter approach there. We'll go yard at the first pitch of the inning. <laughs> hey, if you see it, you got to take it. Carlin Ray struck out there, bringing up number 25, Zachary Ennis. We're getting a little caught oh, up in what we're talking God. about. You heard the contact on Zachary Ennis there. That was an ugly sound. On one side, you've got like, you know, Beethoven's ninth. On the other side of the scale, you've got that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And Hagenmiller crushes it to right center, you know going what? back at the wall. Touch them all! Ian Hagenmiller with yet another impressive shot. This time to right center. Scores one, scores himself. He can be happy about that. Going to touch home plate and has got some to smile about as he goes back to the dugout. He's got something to smile about. He's got something to tell scouts about. He's showing some serious opposite field power. Hit right off of the pole out there. Made a nice little ding sound. Literally a dinger. Yeah, literally a dinger. Really be tough. McAdams goes, hit to left field. In there, down the line. McAdams going around third. He's going to go home. Simpson pulls in with a stand-up double. Puts Ooh. yet another run on the board for the collective. <laughs> A couple of people in the comments section have been complaining about our lack of a portable charger because we've had the iPad die a couple of times before the game has ended. But we've got one today, and we just plugged it in. So thank you to all your suggestions in the comments section. We're working on it, even if it is the last game of the season. <laughs> Two runs already on the board for the collective, which means it is oh. eight to five. And the iPad just almost took a... You said that was your dad's? Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, it's the same's dad. He can afford another. Uh, the, <laughs> the iPad's okay. <laughs> and Mockaby hits that one to third, has to rush oh. back, diving, loses the ball, loses the hat. I think he caught it. I think he caught it. The umpire's going to call him out. Wow. No shame if you're Alan Mockaby. That was just an impressive display by the third baseman. That one has fouled off. Oh, okay. Oh, off a Jeep Wrangler. A decently customized Jeep Wrangler, too, with a matte black finish. And you know the thing about matte paint is that it is impossible to get scuffs out of. That was his own car. <laughs> Luis Tehran's own car was just hit with his own foul ball. <laughs> He's shaking his head. I want to be honest with you, I, I would rather strike up and have that happen. Matte paint, difficult to take care go. of, there's but there's a nice hit and run. Into left center field, Colazzo racing to third. He's going to go around. Tehran pulls up. No, he's going to third. He's going to be caught in the rundown, even though the run scores. Yep, yeah, like you said, nonetheless, the run scores. That's a great another hit and run. And he hit his own car, but then he got an RBI double out of it. If that's a trade-off I have to make, who cares? So here's something curious. We have the portable charger plugged into the iPad. It is working. The iPad is charging right now, but the battery life is still going down. 
So this broadcast might not be on the air for too much longer. But just in case, we do appreciate you tuning in to this Facebook Live exclusive broadcast. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. Not just this game, but the entire South Florida Winter League season. It's been an honor and a privilege to be behind the mic for these past three weeks. I can certainly agree with that for the last three hours in my part. Even if uh, we do disconnect from air, we're going to continue calling the game. So just come and sit in the bleachers and you can listen to it. Oh, we're doing that? I thought if we were like just going to go home. <laughs> Swing and a miss from Holton, and that is going to end the top of the six. Unfortunately, with the battery life, I believe we're going to have to call this broadcast here. So my name is Sam Gelfand, here with Lance Donovan. So on behalf of all of us here at the South Florida Winter League, we would like to say have a very great rest of your day, wherever you may be.